Hello and welcome to our Managed File Transfer Series. Today, we will install Serview Gateway to act as a reverse proxy in front of an existing Serview server. But before we dive in, let's talk about why we're doing this. Here's a diagram of a typical FTP server deployment. It's behind a firewall, but may or may not be in the DMZ. If it's not on the DMZ, connections are happening directly from the internet to your internal network. If it is in the DMZ, you may still have issues with backend connections to databases, Active Directory, and SIF storage that require holes in the firewall. You may also have issues with storing data at rest in the DMZ. With Serview, the solution to these problems is to deploy a Serview gateway as a reverse proxy in the DMZ. With a reverse proxy, inbound connections are terminated on the DMZ and no data at rest is ever stored in the DMZ. And it all happens without making any connections from the DMZ into the internal network because data is streamed end-to-end -end through a secure channel that Serview uses to connect to the gateway. Today, we're going to follow the same general procedure that anyone deploying a Serview gateway in a proof of concept would follow. First, we're going to pick an architecture and assign some IP addresses and port numbers based on that architecture. Then, we're going to walk through three, a few prerequisites, like making sure we have a machine to test on. After that, we're going to perform a live installation and configuration of the gateway, and then we're going to, make, then we're going to test to make sure everything works. So on to step one. We already selected the general architecture we're going to use for today's demonstration. It's a simple one serve one gateway arrangement, and we'll leave clustering aside at least until we have the basics down. I'm also going to simplify the services we'll be testing today. Today, we'll be looking at just SFTP and web transfers. Serview is already installed on my local machine that has an IP address of 192.168.5.71. Serview is currently listening there for SFTP on port 2222 and web transfers on port 8092. The IP address of the Serview gateway will be 192.168.5.59. We'll set that up shortly along with its SFTP and web transfer services on ports 2221 and 8091 respectively. Now on to the prerequisites. Our installation instructions look for four basic things before you install the software. First, you need an existing Serview deployment. As you can see here, I already have that. Um, in fact, there's a gateway here and a few users which we'll be using for testing. Second, you have to have a configured domain with some users and listeners. And again, that's what we're looking at on the screen now confirm on the listeners, for example, that I already have the internal addresses uh, for my core Serview server. Third, you need current versions of Serview and Serview Gateway. And just trust me that we're good to go there. And finally, you need a separate machine for Serview Gateway. And today we're going to fulfill that requirement with a virtual copy of Windows 2008 R2 running in Oracle VirtualBox. So let's get started with the installation. To install Serview Gateway, simply start the installation program and select the language that you want to install it in. You can next your way through a few dialogues, accept a typical EULA, select an installation in, um, directory, and a startup menu. That will kick off the actual installation process, which only takes a few seconds. At this point, we can execute a few uh, command line commands basically to verify that the gateway has in fact been installed on the server. Uh, the first one here is a quick netstat command which verifies that uh, something is listening on port 1180, uh, both localhost and the specific IP address for gateway. The second command just is a quick listing of all the services and looks for any that have the word gateway in it. So at this point we're reasonably certain that Serview gateway is up and running and listening on the right ports on our virtual machine. That's actually about it for configuration on Serview Gateway machine itself. The rest of the configuration happens back through Serview and its management console. So we're going to flip back there to take a look at that. Gateways are added at the system level. And in fact, there is a gateway system tab within Serview. Uh, the no entries there yet, of course. And we're going to add one for our specific gateway that we just added. So the first thing we have to type in is the address that Serview will use to connect to the gateway. And that will typically be a private address of the specific address that Serview is using to talk to Serview gateway. The port number we'll leave at the default of 1180 for now. This is again, of course, the port that Serview is going to use to connect to Serview gateway. And finally, we have 
uh, we're going to type in a what, what's called the public IP address. This is the IP address that the gateway will expose for incoming file transfer connections. So this is the IP address that you would use to connect to with the SFTP or web transfer as we're going to in a few minutes. Normally, in a production environment, this would contain either a public IP address or typically a publicly facing internal IP address. But because, again, we're in a proof of concept mode, we're going to reuse the gateway's private IP address here and use that for the demonstration. Description is something that you can put anything you want in. I'm just going to quickly type the operating system of our gateway here. And we want to leave the enable gateway checkbox on. Now when we save it, Servio is going to go out to this gateway address, try to connect to this port, and find out the status of the gateway. And in fact, by the time we get back to our list of gateways, Servio has already done that and told us that this particular gateway is there and alive and ready to receive uh, listener configurations. It's also telling us that this gateway is running in trial mode. Essentially, when we installed the gateway, you probably noticed that we did not put in any license code. Uh, basically what happened there is that when we installed it, it immediately started a 30-day trial. And that gives you, even in a production environment, a 30-day window in which to put your production license code. The next thing we need to do, now that we have our gateway configured, it's up and ready, is go back into our domain, open up our listeners, and add the appropriate listeners for uh, the gateway. But before I do that, this is a I, I want to show you a step that I highly recommend when you are developing this on your own, which is basically to connect to each one of the listeners that are already pleasant within your domain just to make sure that there's no user conflicts, there's no any sort of permission conflicts. Um, in this case, we connected to um, uh, this port, uh, 2222, uh, using SFTP on 192.168.5.71. I also pre-configured uh, this through the gateway, through 5.59 on port 2221. If I try to connect to this now, uh, you'll see the connection attempt has failed here. Um, and basically what we need to do to get that to work, of course, is to add listeners and assign those listeners to the gateway. So back to the domain listeners tab. Protocol, uh, we're going to start with SFTP. To select the gateway, we're going to use the gateway's IP address. Notice that this was automatically added to the list of possible IP addresses in my listener configuration. And then we're going to type in our port 2221 for uh, gateway SFTP and save it. And we repeat the process for our web transfer listener. Again, we're going to type in 8091 for this listener. The configuration changes we made should take effect immediately. So now if I go back to my FTP client and connect to 5.9 over 2221, I get immediately in. And we can also test our web services. Here's a connection to 5.71. Again, that's my core ServeU server. I'm going to quickly sign on here show you what I would see signing on to the core Servio server. Again, six folders in here. Close that connection. Now I'm going to do the same thing, a web transfer session to 5.59. Logged in and I see the same six folders, exactly what you would expect now that the uh, uh, gateway is up, listening, and ready to go. So I hope you will agree that setting up uh, listeners, setting up the gateway, uh, setting up the whole arrangement for Servio Gateway is easy and fast. And thank you for watching how easy it was to enhance the security of Servio deployment.